Happy and Friday! Happy Friday! <laughs> it's time to wind down and look at what our special surprise is. We're together. We're in the same location. In Arizona. So this is a very special. special. Look, we can, actually, special. we can actually look at each other <laughs> and go, hey, wind down. And and I have to say, I wasn't, um, I was going to not wind today because I actually have a pretty bad cold. But then Gina found this wonderful it's a Moscato, Moscato, a bubbly Moscato. It's a bubbly Moscato, which I didn't even know what that was. And it's and only 11 in the morning here. It's only 11 in the morning here, but my cold, which you might be able to hear, feels much better. The bubbles are actually like helping. Effervescent. Uh, effervescent. <laughs> <laughs> Effervescent. It's a new cold medicine. So we are excited that it's Friday and yes. time to wind down. And as we said in the description, we've had some questions in the past after the show or in the notes. And so we thought, absolutely. I think we should just have you ask, ask us anything. anything. But you wanted a disclaimer. I wanted a disclaimer. Well, almost anything. Okay. Yeah. And for anybody who knows me, there's not a whole lot that's off limits, but. Ask us anything just was like a little too too broad. For a little too broad. So, <laughs> so we're going to ask you something first, which is if you're here, if you're with us, throw in a comment. Dave Scott says, I love Moscato. But at 11 a.m., Dave, it is 5 o'clock somewhere. <laughs> I never would have thought that I would drink any wine before probably like 5 or 6 p.m. Until you met until me. Until I met her. Yeah. And we went on wine tours at 10 a.m. And I thought, wait, people can't drink wine at 10 a.m. And you showed me why not. Why not? Why wine not. not? You know, you can do just about anything. Yeah. And Dave, so, I mean, this is kind of light. It's it's mimosa-ish. Sure, why not? We why not? We can, it's mimosa-ish. Who else is here? Is there anybody <laughs> else with us besides Dave that thinks <laughs> we're crazy? Dave's going, Christopher. Christopher. It's it's 5 o'clock somewhere. So it That's is, it. Christopher. It is definitely Cheers. 5 o'clock. Cheers to Christopher. Cheers. Definitely 5 o'clock somewhere. Uh, that, that is my motto. Yeah, that is. And she's she. we're actually here working. We worked, we worked. all morning. And the it, we've had – yesterday we got to experience my first – I don't know if it was your first haboob. Haboob, which sounds a little gross. Yeah. But it actually it was a, means a. It was like a crazy dust storm dust here storm. in Arizona. Crazy. And so they didn't, they, we couldn't see anything. It was just all dust blowing through. So we've had some interesting Arizona um, experiences. And yesterday was crazy. But um, And Bob is here. Bob Upton, he says, great to see you together. Bob. It's here. great to be together. Yes. It's great to be together. You know, I think one of the things in this world, and I'm sure you all agree, is, is you know, we travel. We make friends all over the world. Um, we don't get to see each other very often. And technology is great. It's great to stay in touch. But there's nothing like face to face, 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 to face being together in the same place. Where you, you can clink glasses. You can actually clink. Yeah, instead um, of just to the camera. So absolutely, absolutely. But we did say we wanted you to be able to ask us anything. And, of course, we usually talk about innovation, innovative ways to build our business and marketing. And one of the questions that people were asking is A for lot. creative ways to repurpose or re-energize current content or older content. And um, and I want to share an example of this, and we'll then we'll brainstorm and talk about that because I think this is a good first question. There is a store here in Arizona, and it's an antique place. It's called Highland Yards, I think Highland Yards, and and maybe it's Highland Market. And Highland Yards is the building behind it. Okay. So, it you walk in, and it's just a big giant antique store. Mix antiques with garage sale stuff sometimes. You know, it's regular antique. It's very large, like hundreds of individual booths. Now, once a month, what Highland Yards does is so brilliant. Once a month, they host an event in the back warehouse. And what they do is all of the vendors inside, I don't know if all of them can participate or if it costs money and so some of them choose to participate. But a handful of the vendors will take merchandise that's already in the antique store and they bring it to the warehouse and they reorganize it. <coughs> they re-merchandise. And you've talked about kind of stores do this where they'll 
take merchandise and move it to the front or move it to the back and kind of so it looks new. Well, that's what this place does. But what's really cool is what they do beforehand to get you excited about it. And that is they send out these postcards. Here's the date. It's going to happen this one day only. And you have to be there early because the doors open at nine and you want to be there early because there's prizes and there's all kinds of stuff. Now, of course, I'm all in for prizes. So the first time I did this, I made my daughter come with me and, and Bailey's 22. And I said, Hey, Bailey, there's an exciting event. There's prizes, fabulous there's prizes, prizes. prizes. So we got there at 8, 15 ish. And there was already a line. People were lined up. You would think they would be, you know, iPhone, new iPhone being released, but people are lined up outside the door and then they have a microphone and they're saying, okay, if you'll let us take a picture of you to post on our Facebook page, raise your hand and everybody starts screaming. Of course, I'm screaming the loudest. And so they come over and they take a picture and it gets posted on their Facebook page. If you have checked in on Facebook or tagged us on Instagram, raise your hand because every time you did, you got tickets. They were giving away all these like little raffle tickets. And then they were giving away prizes. Now, again, you would think they'd be giving away like a $100 gift certificate. No, it was guacamole mix and soup mix and candles. And so very low end um, prices. But what they were doing was so brilliant because they were creating excitement for us to be able to go in and see the stuff that's in the, the same stuff. stuff every the single same stuff. day. But I thought, what could we do that's similar? Because granted, when you walk in, they did merchandise. The way they set things up was beautiful, and it was very intriguing. Even though I'm seeing stuff, I was like, oh, yeah, I remember seeing that in the other part the other, last time I was here. Um, but I started thinking we could do that with our yeah. content because if you have, whether it's a blog post, whether it's a course that you created, whether it's a, a book that you have, what if you made something exciting out of – a piece of that content. So maybe you have a book and it's been out for a while. Why not take a, um, a piece from that? Maybe there's a page that has questions on it that you can give away as a prize and create some buzz around that. So I, I think we could, hello, um, Ahmad. Cheers to you and Sarah. Good to see Hi, you. Hi, Sarah. Um, Sarah says, Sarah joined our group too. Group. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> um, and so I think we need to look at ways for our content to be revived in new ways. And it's taking pieces of existing content and building that excitement. I thought it was brilliant, and I don't know why we couldn't do it. And I think it goes even further than that, because what they did is they took merchandise, in our case, content or whatever it is we sell, and they turned experiencing that content into an experience. It was a definitely so. Experience. So they created an event. They created an experience. I was saying to Gina, you know, maybe maybe the first time they did this whole "you got to get there at eight o'clock" thing because there's going to be maybe there was never even a line, but they created this whole sense of urgency, which comes under RS for seductive, right? right? Uh, sorry, sustainable, and but it is seductive too. It's, yeah, but it's sustainable exciting. is the sense of emergency. You've got to get there. You've got to get there to earn the prizes. And it's all about repositioning. And so, you know, take something as obvious as a website. How do we reposition? That's such a good one. You, I, I forget. I think you said it, or maybe Jira said it this morning, is, is that whole experience allowed you to see something you'd already seen differently. Right. So imagine that I'm not necessarily a new client or customer. and I've been to your website before, and I go there. What's different for me? What have you changed up? Whether it's as simple, we were talking this morning about some of the feature uh, content we have on our pages, on our blog, on the website, Moving changing those, changing those feature content, that feature content or those featured posts. What it does is it, it changes things up. And so people see things differently. So whatever your business is in, That's whatever really you sell, how can you take something that somebody's seen before and create an experience? Experience that will allow them to see it differently. Uh, it's the same reason we repost, repurpose is because maybe they didn't see it the first time or maybe when they saw it the first time it wasn't the right time. So creating an experience, creating some excitement, a sense of urgency uh, in a way that's different, I think is really important. Yeah, As you're saying that, but I'm always looking at ways to take web content that's been sitting for a long time, 
I, I talk about revisiting one page of your website per week. Some people, maybe it's one page per month, but revisit it and look at, do I need new keywords? I, have my keywords changed? Yeah. Uh, maybe my graphic on that page is old and stale and could use a new graphic. All of a sudden you have a fresh look to an old blog post or an old page on your website. Now look at how can you create an event to drive people there. Right. And maybe you even have, I want you to take, and I hear a lot of podcasters using this, take a picture of yourself listening to my podcast or on my website. Yeah. And they say, share that. Tag me on Instagram or Facebook or Twitter, and I'm going to give away a prize. What if you, you know, created an event? I'm totally like in my brain pulling this out and kind of thinking that. You'd have to come up with something that you want to give away. So maybe it's a, a new lead magnet you've created. Maybe it's a book. You had a course, a mini course. And you say, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give this away to somebody who was on my website. And you just have to take a picture of yourself. So you'd have to just get your phone. Or you can take a screenshot of the website that you found. I don't know. Like, think of an Easter egg. Like, can you plant oh, I lo love these little Easter eggs. Yeah. That's great. And here's another idea. And I don't, I don't know if I already shared this. So if I'm repeating myself. Then I'm just repeating myself. She's on cold medicine. I'm on cold medicine wine. mixed with whatever this is. Moscato. Moscato. So that's whoo, all good. Yeah. Um, one of the things we did, which might also be a way to, to spin this, is um, for people who know me know I travel with a bright red ladder. And sometimes what we do is when we have a, a large client who has a foundation or some kind of charity, we say for everybody who takes a picture of themselves with the ladder, and then post it on social media and yeah. tags us, we will donate to the foundation. So what I'm thinking of is, for example, if your target audience is entrepreneurs or is women, you could find a charity. Uh, it's not just you're giving a gift to the person who wins, but for every person who takes a picture of themselves and posts it on social media and tags it, we, the business, will give a dollar, two dollars, whatever it is, to an organization, a not-for-profit organization that you think your ideal target market would be really excited about contributing to. Then you don't need to actually worry about sending, you know, people again. But you say everybody who does this in the next forty-eight hours, and then you can come back to it and you can go. This is how much money you donated to, to whatever so it's all about creating cool this idea. event and experience in fact i love that idea so much i think i think we may need to use that one. i love sarah's but isn't that cool? idea too sarah says you could do a quiz oh. about the content on your web page yes so i'm going to ask three questions that i know you can only find on a specific page of my website and that's um, cool or blog post or something yeah and then you have people share that and I like the sharing part because that gets other people to see, oh, what are they talking about and go to yeah. your website. And Sarah, I am so going to steal that idea because if you go to our website, uh, TonyNewman.com, we did bios. We did our bios in a very, very different way on our website. So go to the, you know, I don't know about what we call that about us. I think yeah. we called it a little something different. Meet the team we might have. And so we did a bio for me, a bio for Jer, and a bio for George. The monkey. the monkey. He has his own bio. But if you go and you look at it, we did it very visually and fun stuff. So, Sarah, your idea would be awesome oh. for that because we've got a lot of really fun Easter eggs in those circles. Yeah. And you could say, you know, what is George's whoever's favorite saying? Yeah. Whoever tells us George's favorite saying first wins a whatever. So, Sarah, okay. I am so stealing that idea. <laughs> Thank you. I'm writing yeah. the check. Yeah, Sorry. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so other, yeah, those are great. So, yeah, the question of how do you repurpose content? I think sometimes we get bored with our own website and our own, we yeah. forget that it could be revived and refreshed and we could do some fun things. Again, that antique store, it was the same old stuff, but it looked new and they made it exciting and gave away prizes to get in the door. Again, the prizes were guacamole mix. And we were talking about the fact that there's a radio station that I listen to that has this question they do every morning, but you play for pride not prize. not prize and they still get tons of people ca calling so i think yeah. sometimes also we work ourselves up a prize that means it's got to be you, you something know something big we yeah. have a we have a caption contest so sarah i don't know if you've seen it today we have a caption contest on our site whoever wins the caption contest i send them something in the mail i send them usually our little 5s pack if they don't have it but people love getting that, that stuff it doesn't have to be worth yeah. hundreds of dollars it's just Fun. Something cool. Yeah, it's something fun. Fun to send. And um, if it could be strategic around your brand, even better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It would actually be ideal. But well, that's the ideal. Have to. Doesn't Sometimes have to be. It just could be fun. Have to be. Um, so great question about repurposing. So let us know if you have other questions. 
Um, I, I one that we were talking about was the whole thing of brands. Does your brand have a have smell? A smell. Not does your brand smell? I, well, and I started thinking, wow, my brand. We all work from home. We always talk about do we shower every day, and we're always yeah. in our yoga pants, but not yoga class. And um, yeah. We may not have a pleasant smell to our no, brand. No, but there's this whole thing out there, and, and I'd really love your opinion on it because for me, there's even though I'm the innovation, I, this may go a little too far. But there's all there's this whole new business because of course everybody's going to monetize everything about building brand sense. Right. Not as in S E N S E, which some people need to brand that too. Um, but brand sense S C E N T S. And of course we would maybe anticipate that restaurants or fragrances might, but there are some big brands that have nothing to do with that. Well, um, the that one that really comes to mind immediately is, and I hate it because you, if I smelled the smell anywhere, I would know it's Abercrombie and Fitch. Oh, really? I don't know. I've never been in an Abercrombie Finch. You don't even need to be in it. You need to walk in a mall, like even a hundred yards away from them, and you smell. They have stuff piped through their um, air system that is so strong that I can't even go in the store because it's yeah, that strong. See, that's, but that's a backfire. That, that's a that's disconnect. A, that is a disconnect. Although it it must work for their audience because it's in every single store, um, and you smell. And we're it. not their audience. I'm not their audience. No, no we're definitely. not their audience. Um, but there are there are some so there are brand scent specialists out there right now, which for me is like going over a little a little. Uh, um, how do you run your? I saw a comment there, but I didn't. Yeah, Sarah asked I'll questions. Post this up. Um, it was the one just before that. Um, so, um, but the, but there are some brands doing really interesting things. So Old Spice, which of course is a scent in itself, what they did, which I thought was really really innovative, is. They recently put in a magazine uh, an ad for Old Spice, and in attached to the page, there was like a there was a blazer, like a literal jacket that you could put on, and it was tucked in. It was like a tear out, and it was a real jacket that you could put on. It was made out of paper, but it had the Old Spice scent, scent on it. And so what they did is they sent, no pun intended, they sent this okay. out to a bunch of influencers, which is another whole key point, right. influencers who are wearing this disposable red Old Spice jacket, paper jacket. Paper jacket. And, it, and so it was It was a little bit of poking fun at fragrances that always have the scrape and, you know, scratch tear and sniff, out, tear out, or whatever. But what a great idea, again, to create an experience around well and people would put it on and take pictures they put it on they take tag pictures, the brand. absolutely tag the brand Although i want to say something about that because i had a conversation with my daughter the 22 year old the shreklet she said it's funny she was mocking us old people because she said i think it's funny that you guys always tell people tag us in your instagram post and she says young people would never ruin their instagram feed by putting a picture just to win a contest. And I said, so I was challenging her saying, so if you could win a thousand dollars, you wouldn't put a picture of yourself and tag the brand? She's like, no. She goes, now if I could um, go to their page, she goes, but I don't want that on my ah, you know, that's Instagram interesting. Page, which I thought was interesting, but I, I said, good thing you're not my demographic. Um, but I, I do think that whole thing of getting people to experience in a way to take a picture of themselves is so brilliant. Yeah. People love really it. Is. Most people love doing that. Now, Sarah asked a really good question. Yeah, let me put um, her question she, up She here. asked about email newsletters and how we, you know, how we run ours. And Sarah, this is such a great question because there are so many different options out there and different versions of we the way people do it. We were it. just talking about it. And in fact, before we relaunched ours in November, um, I did a lot of research on this. So I'll give my two cents worth, you give your two cents worth, and we'll take it from there. So there's one of the gentlemen uh, who's one of the best copywriters in the world. His name is John Morrow, M-O-R-R. -R. John is J-O-N, and Morrow is M-O-R-R-O-W. If you are not following him and, and you do any kind of writing, any kind of blogging, I suggest you just go and follow John because he's brilliant. One of the things that I learned from John about email newsletters was, um, first of all, we tend to confuse what you know calling something a newsletter or calling something a blog which is really what we're talking about is the technology so let's put that aside it's some kind of written communication piece that you send out to people and what john was saying was his blog you can only sign up for by email 
So for example, John's blog, you cannot sign up to get the, R, the RSS, RSS yeah. feed of his blog. And I had the opportunity to ask him in person why he does that. And he said, because for him, growing his list is what it's all about. And he felt that if the content was good enough, people would sign up by email. I had the chance to ask him the question three years later after I asked him it the first time, and he said exactly the same thing. So point number one, Sarah, for us, you can only sign up for our newsletter, which is comes out by email and is an overview of our blog. You can only sign up by email. You can't get an RSS feed. The other thing we decided to do, which are the other two options that people need to make kind of a big decision about, well, there's two things. One is frequency, and the other one is type of content. So we used to share one story, one article that people could read in full on the newsletter, and then there were a few fun links below. And that still is one option if that's how you want to go. The other option is what's called more of a digest or an overview. So now when our insider report comes out, it only comes out once every two weeks because there's a lot of content in it. And we have at least four pieces of content. So you have a little overview for it and a link. And because on our blog, we have four categories, read it, watch it, uh, listen to it or download it. Those are highlighted in our bi-weekly digest. So there are all kinds of options, Sarah. It's a, it's a it's a really great question with some pretty intricate answers, but the bottom line is you need to understand what's your objective and what do you want people to do. Well, so who's your audience? And who's your audience? So sending out one yeah. large large article, one longer article was great. People read it, but what it wasn't doing was bringing them back to the site. Now with the four links, one of the links takes them to our site, one of the links takes them to YouTube. So what we're doing is we're directing them to a bunch of different places. So that's a Reader's Digest version of my philosophy on newsletters. And it's interesting because I had a conversation with a, uh, Tim, Tim Matthew, who's a partner at a speaker's bureau, and Tim and I were talking about newsletters. And he said he subscribes or has been subscribed <laughs> to many speakers uh, blog or newsletters and he said the thing I find interesting is that they're all the same he said I get them and they all look the same they all have the same format the same type of content and that really that really stuck with me I yeah. thought first thing you need to look at is how do I make my whatever you want to call it newsletter update insert report the insider report that the love letter we talked about last week um, what makes mine different? Yes. And, and am I providing content that's really interesting enough for people to not just open it the first couple times, but is it interesting enough for people to continue looking forward to getting when they get their, um, when they open their email? And is that's, it congruent with the brand? True. Yeah. Right. Obviously. And, but but uh, but a lot of them aren't. That's, I guess that's a good point. That they don't look like the you get. They the, use a template. They use a template that looks nothing like their website. It's a huge disconnect. But does it all fit with the story? What does your brand stand for? Ours stands for high value content and a lot of it. So mine's, that's why we mine's decided. Mine's all about low love. value content. Yeah. <laughs> And, and yours is all about love. So much of it. No, I'm not. No, I, I mean, I'm I'm so bad about the frequency part. So, which that's been my um, Achilles heel. Uh, I think weekly is almost too much. Yeah, for us it was. But I don't know. I I mean, I always say if if somebody sent me something that I really looked forward to every week, I probably would still put it in my to read later file. Um, yeah, so it's it's a balancing act, Sarah. Is the bottom line? It really is a balancing act, and you need to look at your open rates. And you know, you know, I've had people say that um, that you know our stuff comes in, and even if they don't read it, they put it aside to read to, read, to read later because they know there's a whole lot of, of of content in there. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Maybe they never go back to read it. I have people who swear by the fact that their newsletter uh, can be read in under two minutes. You know, the big kind of under two minute read. Right. And I go, well, that's great, but I don't stand for an under two minute read. That's not what this brand yeah. stands for. And my goal is to always have, I, I aim for, and I always get too wordy, one thing. What's one thing yeah. you can do this week? Or what's one thing you could focus on for this month? Because I feel like, especially in the social media space, there's so many things we should be doing. 
that people get overwhelmed so they do nothing. So what's one thing that can help move your business forward? Yeah. So you have to look at who is your audience? Are they a research type of person? And Sarah, you're, I think, if I'm not correct, in the e-learning space, um, so you've got people who are used to reading more meaty content and educational type content. So you need to look at that and say, okay, are they looking for how do they consume content? Which part of it is testing because mm -hmm. we look at even yours of going, okay, what, what links are they clicking most? Video, audio, the written words. In fact, words. we just looked at yeah. it and it was, it video. was, it, well, it was video, but there were still a first. lot of people yeah. clicking on the podcast and clicking on the articles, which means the one thing that we, luckily have succeeded in doing is providing content in different in ways different formats. so that they consume it because even though a lot of the people click on the videos there are other people clicking on other things and if those weren't included those options to consume right. the content differently you weren't included That's then true. you'd miss those people so really looking at and testing you know running those and if, and if you're getting a good um, equal disbursement mm -hmm. of links you know clicks then you know your audience likes the content in that mixed format. If you were getting nobody clicking on the podcast links or the audio links or the written word, but they were all watching the video, obviously that's where you'd want to focus more of your time. So I think newsletters have just become so, uh, I think we're, we're so used to them. We need to really shake up how we, how we name them, what we call them, what our subject lines are, how we deliver them, what's in them, so that they're really unique. And you bring up a really good point, which is a subject line. And whenever, whenever we're talking about, um, you know, innovative experiences, that subject line is so important. It yeah. is so important. And, um, you know, one of the highest open rates we had was a few weeks ago, uh, for the insiders report that went out and the subject line was friends with benefits. <laughs> Open so rate, the seductive rate was high. The seductive rate was high. <laughs> Open rate went through the roof. And I'm a fan. And again, this is the, the world according to Newman. I am a huge fan of subject lines that that drive curiosity and that and that create some kind of intrigue as opposed to, you know, volume to insiders report or something like that. I I I I person. I know there are people that do that. I personally don't. Um, do that because I want the subject line. I spent a lot of time thinking about the subject because I want it to create some curiosity. Mine are often questions. Um, what is this? Or, or you know, also, did you see this? Or something. Test adding an emoji in I've your subject that. line. Um, is it working? Does yeah, that work? It does because, again, if you look at your inbox, it's going to stand out. Yep. So look at an appropriate emoji for the topic that you're covering or one idea. that's your branded emoji. Um, putting that in the subject line, whether that's in the beginning, the end. Um, I, when I'm promoting my podcast, I, I've been using a lightning bolt. So I'll say listen to new podcasts with a lightning bolt. Just because our, our inboxes are so yeah. full, it would help it stand out visually to at least give you that extra double take Absolutely. for people to look. So play with things like that as well. So Sarah, has that been, has that been helpful? You give us a yay or a nay in the comments to see if we've, uh, oh gosh, oh. thank you so much. This gives me a lot of things. Okay. <laughs> yeah. There okay, you go. So we overload. We so we like, might have over, over answered. Yes. Yeah, we always has, over -answered. She asked for a glass of wine yeah, and yeah, we poured the whole bottle. Yeah. We, we, yeah. Yeah. We've done you in the barrel of it. Yeah. But I, I think it's a great topic and a great question because it is one funny that we just were talking about it this morning and we're always trying to analyze what And works. here's the flip side. The flip side is don't be like me. Don't overanalyze. We can get, we can get caught up, um, that video, the audition or commit, right? We can get, I can, the royal we, I could get caught up in doing things right and doing at some point. If that's getting in the way of you actually just getting your content out there, then, then that's, that's not a good thing. It's very smart to analyze. It's very smart to look at what's working and what's not. But at some point, you got to go with your gut, what's right for you and at least get it out there. It's like, um, the, the book that I'm writing and people keep reminding me that it can't get edited until it gets written. <laughs> funny how that funny, works. Funny how that works. <laughs> so Sarah, you just got to get some stuff out there and see, and, and see how people it. react. Yeah, see how they react. And, and you know, sometimes when we get down on ourselves that, oh, I don't have the right, um, you know, people aren't reading it or people aren't opening my, it, it could be that you have the wrong people in your list. Could be. So maybe new blood into your email list. It's time to recruit using lead magnets or using, um, you know, the teaser content to sign up for my weekly tips on this. 
it's time for new people to come in that might be the right audience. And that's a really interesting thing too, is that I was looking at our um, insider report open rates and we're very oh, fortunate. We have a really good um, open rate. Um, and so there were a couple of things that happened when I looked at the numbers a couple of weeks ago or even a week ago was one that, that we had actually lost a hundred subscribers and I just about had a an heart attack. Um, and, <laughs> and the second thing was the open rates were, were, were down. As I say, we're still very fortunate with great open rates, but they're down. And as soon as I see that kind of fluctuation, my analytical brain goes into overdrive. So first thing was that the losing of subscribers. And I went to Jared and I said, what's this about? And, and it turned out that they were all from a group that I had spoken to a couple of years ago. And then the kind of newsletter one on hate went on hiatus. And when it came back, these people were all going, I don't recommend signing up for this, which right. they did. But, but the point, Jared's point was they were never really our ideal clients anyway. Exactly. And so getting those names, we have a small but mighty list um, with a high open rate. And I would rather have that than 10,000 people with a 2% open rate. Like, so it's not so much just the open rate. And the other thing we were thinking about this morning is depending upon your email, um, what's it called, platform or whatever it's yeah, called. The service you use. The service you use. So for example, I can oh, read yeah. an entire email without clicking on it to open it because I have a preview pane in exchange. So those emails come in, I have a preview pane. I scan down my digest emails every morning, love them, but never, never click, them. never open them. I will click through on something if I want to see it, but that doesn't count as an open rate, that counts as a click through. So with today's technology, sometimes we can get caught up right. in thinking something means something when in fact, people are finding other ways just to absorb the content. So take a deep breath. This comes, this is the pot calling the kettle black. Well, take a deep breath. Also, you can reframe things. I've been actually celebrating the unsubscribes because when you get to a certain point, you're paying for these people to be on your list. Yes. And if they're dead weight to your list or they're never the right audience in the first place, you right, know, right. sometimes we get like, I've created lead magnets that might attract a certain group of people that they're never really going to be my ideal audience, but it was a piece of content that I created because I got a lot of questions about it or something. I need to, as a matter of fact, I've been debating on this spring cleaning email list and do one that the subject line is please unsubscribe. Please un please. see that would get an open. It would get an open rate. And then I'm going to yeah. say in there, I don't want to bug you. Yeah. I don't want to be sending you helpful tips to yeah. build your business if you don't have a business to build. If I use that subject line before you get a chance to use it, does that affect our friendship? I'm sending it tonight. Oh, darn. <laughs> but I think that would actually really be, subject. it would be. And I think it's a smart one because sometimes we're, we're, we're hanging our pride on a number of subscribers when, like you said, Tony, I'd rather have fewer subscribers that actually open my my content yeah. and that are the right audience. And I think too many times we think, oh, I need, you know, a hundred thousand subscribers. You can have a hundred thousand subscribers and 40 people are your real audience. Yeah. Quit paying for people who are on that list and they never do anything. So yeah. I'm going to, yeah. I'm, I'm going to do it. Yeah. Please unsubscribe. Please unsubscribe. I don't want to pay. So for what time are you doing that tonight? I won't tell you. It's going to oh. be a surprise. Surprise. I'm going to use her S. Surprise. Surprise. And it, it's seductive. It, it's seductive. Um, yeah. So, and look, yeah. it's already, Darn. our time is up. No. It is. It's That's been crazy. 30 minutes. I know. That's crazy. <laughs> so, those of you who didn't get your questions in first, Oh, we're say, sorry. Say, oh, so you could go in the comments True. We'll and, and, and put and put the questions or we won't answer them. We'll save them for another wind down. Because that'll be seductive. Because that'll be, that'll be suspenseful. And it'll be really cheating. Well, us, is that another S? Suspenseful? Suspenseful -less in this? Something. It might be another S. Yeah. It, it might be another successes. S. Successes. You have to rebrand everything. Successes. Um, yes. And the so, six S's doesn't work. Five S's is really good. So have a wonderful <laughs> weekend. <laughs> Have a wonderful weekend. Yes. We are definitely going to have a wonderful weekend because like and we're enjoy actually enjoy the sun together a little bit. We might Arizona. have to go to that antique store. We're going to go to the antique store. Just we're for gonna, research. Yeah. For research. We're going to art. Marketing research. Tomorrow the guys are going to go art. off and we're going to art. Yeah. So I hope so, you guys have as much fun as we have Wonderful planned. weekend. And really, seriously, if you have questions, because it's great for us to keep coming up with stuff, but like Sarah, that was a great question oh, that we might so never relevant. have thought of, but yeah. so relevant and so important. So um, Bob says we're awesome, especially live together. So that I just need to move to Arizona. I, I told her there's a place across the street. Yeah, yeah, there's yeah. a lot that you yeah, could build there's a lot, right there. A lot, 
Yeah. There's a lot we could do with a lot. Yeah. And, you know, so, okay. I, I'm tired and I got to sleep. <laughs> she has a cold. Back so, to laying in the sun. Back to laying in the but sun. Thank Bye, you guys. guys. We have an amazing you. weekend. We appreciate you so much. Cheers. It's 5 o'clock somewhere. And it's, it's probably 5.30. 5.30 somewhere. It's 5.30 somewhere. <laughs> Bye. Bye, everyone.